Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Omar. I am from uh, Adyen. I'm a team lead um, uh, there. And today we are going to talk about uh, internal developer portal, uh, how, um, uh, how we in Adyen uh, managed to pull one and how it is uh, and can be uh, solving a lot of problems for the engineers. Um, so again, my name is Omar, I'm a team lead. I'm also the product owner uh, for the internal developer portal. Um, and uh, I'm from the, I live in the Netherlands, but originally from Egypt. So what we'll be talking about today in a bit of detail is what were the challenges that, uh, that happened um, in, in, uh, in, in IDN and um, uh, why they why they why, why they're important right um, uh, why we need to fix uh, some of them um, what measures that we take to uh, to do that how we thought about it but um, but also how um, how much of um, how, how big of a thing did it turn out to be uh, what were the challenges and of course uh, what we learned uh, from them and maybe uh, if you're watching then uh, you don't have to fall into uh, these problems um, in the future. So one of the triggers that uh, that we saw um, was a message that someone sent on on our uh, on our chat system and says, uh, "Hey, uh, do you um, uh, do you know who can I, I can reach out to um, to?" find like the owner of a framework that we have um this is a, a question that might seem simple but uh it has been asked by a lot of people and no one knows who owns what and no one knows who does what uh, especially as a company is growing um we just kind of lost track of the services that we have and who owns it but this is not only the only question a lot of other questions happen uh, and people ask themselves, for example, is there a documentation for this service or um, is, um, is there any API docs? Can I where can I find it? Uh, how about my deployments? How can I, how, how can I see if my deployment failed or succeeded? Um, of course, the ownership, but, uh, but also um, where can I check the logs? Uh, if my service is, is, is deployed in Kubernetes and I'm not in the Kubernetes team. Um, are there any standards that I should follow when I'm building a new project? For example, a Flask, uh, a Flask project, do I need to copy paste uh, from my previous uh, code or should I have a golden path that I um, that can generate a repo for me and uh, with, the, with the best practices uh, of the company? So we have a lot of questions. Uh, that uh, we thought we need to do something about it. Nowadays, it is, as you can see in this picture, it is like finding Waldo. You don't know uh, where 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 Waldo is, and most importantly, if you look at if, if if you look at them, it will take a long time to do it. So we have different sources um, of of information where you can get uh, where you can get this information. Um, but again, you have to look in, in a lot, a lot, a lot of places. And um, yeah, if you were lucky to find it, it will take you a long time. So to summarize uh, more of the struggles and put them into perspective, um, the main things that we wanted to focus on is the ownership uh, of the services. What do these services uh, do? Um, how can I? find the code for a service, um, where is it deployed, and if there are any dependencies in case we want to make any changes, uh, it doesn't impact the platform. Um, how can I have a golden path for, for starting new projects, and who should I contact to get, for example, a database, or to deploy my app on Kubernetes, or, 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 or. And for that, we, we decided that uh, an internal developer portal is the perfect solution for our problems. Um, it will be a front end for all the offerings that we have in, in, in the company. 
Um, it will combine all the toolings, all the all the apps, all the documentations, the technical ones, in one place. Um, but it will also offer a self-service platform where teams can offload their their repetitive tasks that um, and that that they usually spend a lot of their time on, and self-servicing them, offering them to this portal, and focusing more on the development uh, of the platform itself. So what an IDP in general serve is that uh, with it, you can create new software. You can, uh, as a team, you can manage your own services uh, in, in one place. Uh, so for example, you can check the logs of your services. You can check where they're deployed. You can check if there are any errors in deployment. You can, uh, you can check your Git repository, uh, the CI CD part, um, and any custom configuration uh, that is tied to your product, to your, to your service. Uh, but you can also discover new new services that are not related to your team, um, and that's where the service catalog comes into place, uh, where all the company uh, puts their own services there. Um, and you can also visualize stuff, so you can see how your service is impacting other services. Uh, the relationship between services there is is a very critical part. Um, of, of the of the service catalog and with that we were thinking a lot uh what what we uh, what we should uh, do should we build it from scratch should we go to an open source one should we go with a commercial one that we like we buy um, a commercial um, a solution um, and then we realized that we are a tech company we like to build stuff so we don't want to just um, be configuring this stuff from the UI. Um, so we didn't go for a commercial uh, product. Uh, we also didn't want to invest a lot of time building it from scratch when we when there is something open source. Uh, like, and then we we decided, hey, backstage is a, is a good option. We can give it a go. So um, we we tried that in December of, uh, of last year. Um, and it turned out great, uh, mostly because it's now more of a mature product than it used to be before. Uh, the community is great, uh, so they helped us a lot. And now we are la we we launched it in uh, in May um, of this year. And one of the biggest selling points for for Backstage for us uh, in our decision making was the plugins. A lot of plugins there. Uh, they are not only provided by Backstage itself, but also by other, by the community. Uh, so you can you can see how many of these things you can use and integrate in your own, um, in your own instance uh, with a click of a button. Minimum configuration is needed, just like putting your API keys or tokens uh, of your private instances, and then here you go. Uh, but you can also then contribute to the community and you can create your own plugins if you don't have them uh, here. Uh, so it made the, it made the adoption very uh, much faster than if we would have went with a locally built um, uh, system. So with an internal developer portal, whether it was backstage or not, the, the, the building blocks for the architecture will differ a lot depending on your own infrastructure, on your own needs. Uh, so what we wrapped up is uh, this is what we want from, uh, from our backstage um, uh, uh, implementation and infrastructure that it's composed of three layers. So the, the, the basic layer is uh, having a service catalog, having self-service, uh, being able to search uh, through all our infrastructure, all our tools from one place uh, and define a proper uh, access control so that we, we we abide by the security mechanisms of the company. Um, but also, and then later above that, we want to we want to see how users are interacting with it. How um, uh, uh, is there any suspicious activity uh, happening? Um, what are users using the most, uh, and 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 so forth. So all the insights and analytics um, it was very, also very important for us. And on top of that, we wanted to offer the the platform in two different ways so either a portal or an api and the portal might some, seem obvious but the api is also very important because then we can offer 
the, the this platform uh, to, to the systems, right? So systems can communicate with the platform to discover what we have in our infrastructure um, as a company, um, instead of going to multiple places uh, to fetch this information and then having to authenticate to different to, to all uh, these uh, these these endpoints. Um, so we'll talk about two of these things in in in, in this talk. First one is the service catalog. And this is how a service catalog uh, would look like. So first, it gives you the overview of what this service is and who owns it, what are in, in which in which uh, life cycle is it in, um, but also uh, there are a lot of links that uh, that define the service. So you can already, for example, uh, go to um, uh, the 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 chat uh, with to chat with a team owning it. Uh, you can see logs. You can uh, you can see the Grafana dashboard for this uh, for the service. But you can also see the relationship uh, of, uh, of of this service with the entire ecosystem, uh, which is in our situation was great because now if we if there is an impact in one of these services, now we know what other services will be impacted. And down there, you can also see the, the APIs that either this service provides or consumes, um, which is also great to know what APIs do we have and also if it, 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 what, what services uses these APIs. So what happens to show you this, uh, this beautiful picture is just the YAML file. So this is how you create a new service. You just create a YAML file. It's a very simple one. And you just define your own, uh, the characteristics of this service. You can uh, you can provide the, you, you get repo, your Kubernetes um, uh, namespace where the, 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 the service is deployed, if any, but a lot of other things. So it's, it's very simple. And this is one of, one of the very main um, criterias of, deciding which internal developer portal uh, are we going to use the simplicity for the users because without that maybe the users will will do that once but they will never onboard or continue onboarding their own services um if the if, if the process takes a lot of time so for the for what are the characteristics of this yaml file right uh, the characteristics are mainly for, so defining for, first of all, what is this uh, type of the service? So uh, is this service um, an API? Is it a resource like a database or um, a VM or uh, a storage appliance, for example? Uh, or is it um, a website? Is it a library? Um, then what are the relationships? Is it dependent on any other services or systems or uh, who was it owned by? Does it provide any APIs or does it consume ones? And lastly, what are the integrations with the with with the, with the other tools uh, that that we have in the company? So, for example, is it the Kubernetes, Grafana, Git, whether Git GitHub or GitLab? Um, but stuff like from also Sentry, SonarCube, sky's the limit. So let's, this this wasn't easy. Uh, we thought it was. We thought, uh, hey, uh, we're going backstage. Everything was um, was uh, was easy. Uh, everything's like click click click, and it will be perfect. But uh, trust me, it was not. Uh, it involved a lot, a lot, a lot of development. And we realized that Backstage is a framework. Uh, you don't just uh, deploy it there and it's it's there. You have to do a lot of work, a lot of development uh, into it, which is good, but also uh, a little bit challenging. So some of the, the challenges that also came up with, uh, with that in, in, in specifically how you onboard um, uh, services were teaching users how how to think of their services as defining as, as a service definitions uh 
every team has their or have their own services but if you tell people define your own service they'll be like but what is the service and what do you want me to put in it how do i think of it um so it was very hard in the beginning to onboard people on what is a service uh, what is the difference between a system, a domain, and a component, for example? Um, how how important is it to link all the, the integrations that you have with the service in one place and to put the effort into it? So the learning curve was definitely one of the, uh, the, the problems or the struggles that we had in the beginning and maybe till now. So for that, we... So we did a lot of things like documentations, um, talks, presentations, um, but we also tried to simplify how the users are onboarding their own services. So we decided to offer as well an, a, a, a UI form base um, to onboard your services instead of having a YAML file. Uh, and even now, uh, something that is not in the presentation uh, slides, but also uh, we we even refactored the, the YAML schema. So now we have a way much simplified uh, YAML schema that is very direct and uh, uh, very, very user-friendly. So also, users don't spend a lot of time trying to read documentations and deciphering the terminologies and, uh, and, and, and uh, finding the right keys and values for stuff. And this helped a lot. So it's very important, very, very important to, to see what the user, how, how can it be easier for the users and not having a great functionality, but the adoption then will be, uh, will be very bad because it's hard to, um, to, to onboard it. Second thing was uh, the, the governance. So uh, how, like, if, if, you, if, you see this, um, if you see this slide uh, in terms of uh, how are we gonna take this YAML file, make sure that it is properly um, configured, properly that the information there is right, and, and not just populate uh, backstage with wrong information or even worse, not working information. For example, uh, 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 a Kubernetes namespace that doesn't exist or uh, a, a Git repo that is not there or a different Git repo than the one that should have been there and then you provide a false information. So for that, we created the, um, uh, a centralized place for all the service catalog YAML files to be uh, in the Git repo. And then this Git repo will pass through linting and validations um, uh, pipelines until it gets pushed to backstage. And this is kind of an unpopular opinion and approach. Um, than maybe most of the backstage implementations out there because the, the advice is always to uh, make, make the YAML files, like the service catalog YAML file, uh, close to the user code. But in our situation, it, was, it, it did not make that much sense because we needed to be in control of the information and validate that it is true uh, before it gets added to backstage, and now we're doing even uh, even more with the um, with the new YAML structure. Uh, so we're doing even uh, the conversion of YAML schemas and um, uh, and adding new uh, new values uh, that that serve our uh, infrastructure there as well. So it, this picture got more even more complicated. Or is getting even more complicated than uh, than than how it looks uh, right now. So that was with the service catalog, but um, the second part was the scaffolding part. And scaffolding is uh, the the name for a self service uh, offering self service uh, uh, to the to the public. Um, these are examples of what you can offer as a self service uh, to to your company. Uh, this is what we do. So for example. Uh, deploying your application in Kubernetes, now you no longer have to talk to the Kubernetes team and open a ticket and um, and uh, and know a person there to accelerate uh, things because the team is very busy and it takes weeks uh, to do that. Now you can just uh, click here, do your thing, put uh, put the information there, 
click on a button, and then ideally it takes it over and and, and executes it. And 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 in a, in a minute or two, maybe uh, your request is fulfilled. How this is the how this is uh, uh, under the hood, also in a very simplified uh, way. Uh, so we use Airflow as a back end um, as a back end system for Backstage. Uh, also, it's a, a rather unpopular opinion uh, to not use the Backstage back end uh, itself. Uh, we're using Airflow as a workflow manager. Uh, so we define the tasks there uh, for every self service operation, and then uh, Airflow executes and communicates with all these um, with all the infrastructure that we have based on uh, what the the service owner uh, define how the um, the self service will, uh, will 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 be implemented uh, and then we have also uh, then the database where that ties all these things together of course and we're using postgres for that but then you can see all the uh, so for example like puppet and ansible argo uh, Prometheus, Terraform, all these things, they are being contacted and, and, and commute, reach out to from Airflow based on uh, the, the self-service, uh, which shows how much of time, uh, even if a user wanted to script this, uh, it would take to get authentications and access to all these things. Uh, it will take if, with, with the scaffolding part. So with the with scaffolding, one of the uh, because one of the first services that we launched was deploying uh, your application to Kubernetes. We tried to measure how much of an impact that uh, that caused, and we saw that uh, on average, on the best case scenario, if the Kubernetes team was available and not having a lot of uh, work on their plate. Um, then if they receive a request, on average, it takes around two days uh, to, to create or deploy applications in Kubernetes. But with the, with the new self-service part, it's now worst-case scenario around 10 minutes, uh, depending on the networking stuff and, and everything. Like Worst-case scenario, it will be 10 minutes. And of course, then you can see how much of a difference uh, this, uh, this could take, uh, this, this, this makes. What we are we planning for the for the future? We want to build more plugins because more plugins means more functionality and and more um, more to show that the internal developer portal combines everything that we need and it will be the one stop uh, to go for all our engineers to use and consume the information uh, and the services in the in the company. We want to offer the API support. So now we only offer the portal part, but uh, but APIs are also very important for us because we want systems to communicate with us and and get and, and fetch the information from there and process it uh, to their to their needs. Searching also very important. How can you uh, fetch the information from a lot of sources? Take, for example, you want to fetch from, from GitLab, you want to fetch from our internal document, documentation um, uh, hub, um, you want to fetch from Stack Overflow, you want to search from anywhere. Um, just one place, you search, and then it shows you everything there, of course, with the services that are already available in the portal. And the last thing is how can we update the service catalog automatically without having users manually uh, creating YAML files uh, or putting them on the, on, 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 the, on, the, on the form itself manually. How can we fetch information from different sources? Uh, for example, our configuration management system from DNS, from console, from, 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 uh, and then we come up with, uh, with a catalog automatically. Last thing that I want to talk about is the lessons learned, and of course, uh, it can. It, it, this is where it gets interesting, because uh, these there are things that we never saw coming, uh, but uh, what we learned a lot 
from them. Um, so it's also important to share. First thing is exactly take a deep breath. It can, it can be very tempting to try everything and and to offer uh, to offer all the things that an internal developer portal like Backstage can offer and 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 get too excited, um, but that never works. Second thing is build the portal or this platform from the user perspective. What we fell into was we assumed that this was, this is what the users would want. So we will build a lot of features and integrate a lot of plugins, thinking that there will be users for it. They will appreciate that. But then when the users started using it, they will be like, oh, we don't use that. We don't want to use that. Or we use it like once every month. Or this is actually very hard for us. So we had to re build a lot of things uh, or even remove some of the things that we built because we didn't do this part from the beginning. And another complementary lesson was hiding how difficult things can be from the users. Example for that is the service catalog because the YAML file, for example, can be a quite challenging thing for, for the general public uh, to, to understand how the YAML schema is. Uh, because they didn't build the, the platform. And another thing, of course, is, is how can you make a self-service easier uh, for them to consume? And last point, which is kind of related to the first one, is how, we, is, is that how important it is to start very slow and small. If you, if you start by building everything from the, from the beginning, if you start your MVP, for example, with the self-service part, which is like the scaffolding part, and the service data, the service catalog, it's already too much. Probably, you will be integrating a lot of things, having a lot of options for the users, and and not building one thing properly from the beginning. It's way better, in our experience to only start with one thing, do it right, do it with quality, add all the custom integrations with it that serve our needs, and then look at the other features that we want to integrate. Uh, and one of these things were like, for example, including plugins. It's very easy to integrate plugins because they're just one click of a button. But with every plugin that is, there is, yes, it's easy to integrate, but the more quality you can bring is how can you integrate this plugin into your ecosystem? How can you develop on this plugin and, and show custom information that, that serve your need? So uh, that, um, that, was, that was about it. Um, I, hope, uh, I hope it was beneficial. Um, if you are still uh, looking into um, building your own internal developer portal or in the process, um, and if you have any uh, any questions or um, want to connect, then uh, please uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, I think uh, my LinkedIn was in the first slide, but uh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>